I kind of took a chance and walked up to an open door just to peek my head in and said hi and said, hey, can I take a peek in? And the chief clerk was like, sure, come on in, look around. You want your picture on the roster? And I'm like, I will take that chance because, and that opportunity, because yeah, it's, it's always nice when you get a little special look into the behind the scenes, especially having worked in the Capitals. We, we really appreciate that. So this was a great experience today. While visiting friends in the Minneapolis-St. Paul region, we were able to check off Minnesota State Capitol, another one of our State Capitol track tours. And as those of you who have followed the channel know, we both used to work in Michigan State Capitol. So when we're out and about, we try to visit state capitals. And a lot of times, unfortunately, it tends to be on weekends when they're closed. We got lucky this time. We got extra lucky <laughs> because your friend Becky works uh, in the building here, was able to get us in for a little quick tour and, and we got to walk around. But then because they're up against a budget crunch right now, the state house was actually in session today on a Sunday. And when they finished, you managed to work <laughs> our way into the chamber. Hey, what can I say? I'm a, I'm one of those people that will try a door or ask somebody, you know, I've always, uh, ask forgiveness then permission kind of person and it usually pays off in this case the door was open i, I kind of walked up to it and there was a gentleman standing there and i said hey do you mind if i pop my head in and just take a quick picture and he was like oh by all means come on in and and i said i used to i'm like oh thank you i used to work at the michigan capitol and he's like oh do you want to come in and get your picture taken and i'm like well hold on let me go find the rest of my party and, and so yeah so we were able to go in and we talked to them it was ended up being the chief clerk of the house and we ended up talking to him and one of the representatives about not only just the chamber but but their legislative session and how things are going and some history on the capitol and it was just a very nice like behind the scenes thing that we wouldn't have gotten to do otherwise so it just sort of extra worked out today so big shout out to Becky for getting us into the building and then to the chief clerk, Patrick Murphy, I believe is his name. Uh, I'll correct that if it's not right. But uh, yeah, big thank you for just being very hospitable, letting us in, giving us a little tour of, of not just the chamber, but a little bit behind the scenes. And it's always great to, to hear from people who understand what these institutions are about and, and the history and the importance of them. Um, we tend to do kind of initial impressions when we see capitals like this. And for me, it was um, a lot of marble. That's what stuck out to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, the brightness, the granite, the marble, and it's everywhere. <laughs> and it's really pretty marble too. A lot of times you see just very plain white marble. And in this case, it had a lot of colors to it. So like the big pillars and the columns and in the stairwells. So that was, it was really impressive to me. Um, their dome is really cool. And it's really, it's really pretty painted blue on the inside. And then on the outside, it's got a gold tip on it um, with this um, gold statue that I read about, but we'll have to provide a little bit more description because I don't exactly remember what it was called, but it's, it was just really cool. And inside, uh, they were explaining to us in the house chamber, it's like very acoustically perfect. And so instead of being a square room, it's like a half dome or like half circle shaped and a dome shape over the top. So you can stand on the rostrum and have somebody speaking and their sound is amplified to the back room as if there was a microphone on and there's not at all. So it, it that was, was <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny though. The state representative that, that we talked to who was there was telling us that they, they kind of have to keep track of that because if you're on one side of the chamber talking to a colleague about a vote, someone on the other side of the chamber might hear exactly what you're saying very clearly. And they might be on the opposite side of the aisle as well. And you don't want them to know what that vote's going to be. So I, I could see it. And they said it has its pros and cons, but uh, that was a clearly a tidbit of information that we wouldn't have found out otherwise if we hadn't been able to talk to them. So it always pays to ask people if you see there and you never know what you might be able to do. Uh, yeah, but to go back to the marble for a second, when I say it's everywhere and I'll show a video of it, but I mean, it's you mentioned the big columns, it's in the stairs, there's benches, it's in the floor. So that's why it stuck out to me. Very pretty, very well done, I thought, but that is definitely something that I noticed was very different about this Capitol. The Minnesota State Capitol was completed in the early 1900s. Uh, and it's been through a series of renovations. Uh, the most recent one was only about five years ago as a complete restoration of everything. So it was really cool to see that. And when they bring these old buildings and historic buildings back like that, I think it was around 1999, if I remember the sign correctly, they redid what's known as the Rathskeller. And that was a really neat feature down in the basement of the Capitol. It was originally designed as a full service restaurant uh, modeled after the German Rathskellers, but over the years, it ended up actually just becoming more of like a cafeteria, buffet style, and you know, cafeteria more than a full-service dining facility. 
When it was originally built, there were really cool decorative paintings all over the ceiling and the archways with animals and German mottos and just some really cool, you know, decorative artwork. Unfortunately, during World War One, due to anti-German sentiment, most of that, in fact, all of it was painted over. And then over the years, I think either people forgot about it and then more layers of paint were added every time that they decided to have a new paint job or restoration of the Capitol. And at one point they did restore some of it, but it was during prohibition. And so a lot of the sayings had to do deal with good beer and good wine. And they said, well, that's not appropriate. So they changed the sayings to dealing with food. And then they painted over it again during World War II. And finally in 1999, they restored the whole thing back to what it was. So even though it is no longer a full service dining facility and it's still the cafeteria, the, the artwork is back. And so I'm really glad that they were able to preserve and, and restore that. One fun little tidbit about that is when they were starting to work on one of the restorations, one of the people that were working on it discovered as they removed some layers of paint, they found like a painting of a squirrel, I believe. And they're like, hmm. And so they started kind of going around that and they realized if that was there, maybe there was much more still existing underneath. So they carefully removed layers of paint yeah. and was able to find a lot of the original stuff. So it's always, I always love stories like that, that people kind of investigate things a little bit more and, and find stuff and restore it. It's a really awesome way to do it. Every state capital we visit is both very similar and very different. And, and a couple things in this case that we thought were unique was they actually still have a good sized press room. Now I know in Michigan, due to uh, the diminishing numbers of press corps, remodeling and everybody going digital, the old fashioned press rooms don't exist anymore. Uh, but here they do and they have actually like every of the major press outlets, whether it's like the Minnesota Public Radio Station or the Star Tribune or whoever it is, it's all like labeled on the wall. So to, to my press corps friends, um, um, this would be the place to work if you were covering the Capitol. Uh, but another unique thing here a little bit is they have a number of different wings and rooms here in the Minnesota State Capitol dedicated to the history of Minnesota. They've done a really good job of sort of preserving and showcasing Minnesota's heritage here. We will always check out a state capitol wherever we are if we can, but we'd encourage you to do that too. And do it when you can take some time and really wander around the building, learn the history, see what's going on with the architecture. Find a capital near you, go to a capital, and check it out. Keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.